Hello, my name is Edwin Bautista, and I'm 25 years old, based in Austin, Texas, and you're watching Financial Audit. What do you do for a living in Austin, Texas, 25 year old? Yeah, so I am a management assistant for a local nonprofit here in the city, but we have offices throughout the state and our work impacts multiple cities. Okay, how many hours a week do you work? I work about 25 hours a week. Okay, and what's your, is it salary, hourly? Hourly. How much? $25 an hour. Okay. Do you think you hit that 25 every time or is that just about an average? Um, it's pretty much me, me, every time my paycheck's pretty consistent, like give or take an hour or two less. What's your paycheck biweekly or what? Uh, twice a month. Yeah. Okay. So before taxes, you're probably making about $2,700 on a monthly basis on average. I would say more closer to 2,500. Okay. So or you don't always get 25 hours? Not always. There's maybe like one paycheck or two that I yeah. do like maybe... Like an hour, like not less than not less than five or you know hours at most, but it's in that range. Usually, my paychecks are relatively the same though. About a thousand dollars after taxes. Okay. Wait, a thousand dollars? A thousand thirty-two. It's like usually what I. Wait, what? It doesn't get cut in half. Oh, I mean by paycheck, like paycheck is a thousand dollars, and then per month it's two thousand dollars. Goes from five thousand to two thousand. Where are you getting 5000 2500 You said your weekly paycheck, your bi um, pa paycheck oh, I'm sorry, like I'm part-time. I'm working part-time, so I only work 25 hours a week. And You said you make $2,500 bi-weekly. I meant monthly. Okay. Okay. So it's probably after what after taxes on a monthly basis? Uh, 132 1032 1032 Why is it a 50%? I'm not sure what you mean, like my monthly... It goes from $2,500 a month to $1,000? Yeah, gross. Yeah, that's gross. $2,500 gross. And so after taxes, it's like $1,000... A month? Per paycheck. Dude, you keep switching between a month and bi-weekly. What is what? <laughs> well, I get paid twice a month, so... Yeah. That's usually twice a week, so... Not twice a week. Um, I'm sorry, twice a month, so... I'm not really sure. My uh, monthly total, my monthly gross is twenty five hundred dollars. Okay, your monthly gross. What's your monthly net? Monthly net is roughly two thousand dollars. There we go. That makes so much more sense. You kept switching between biweekly and monthly when describing your stuff, but without the context of switching. But that is okay. Two thousand dollars a month. First of all, that's incredibly low. It is, yes. So, what yeah. else? What else is going on? <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much my income source. I don't have any other um, side hustles or anything like that. I have a relatively low housing cost, so that you know helps out. But I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty much living off of thirty thousand dollars. What else? Are you, what are you doing with the rest of the hours of the week? I'm a student. Oh, you're a student. I'm a grad okay. student. Yeah. Okay. Where do you go? UT. Oh, okay. What do you study, grad student? Uh, community and regional planning. Urban planning. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, what year are you? Finishing up the semester, actually. So, graduating in May. Graduating in May. Okay. Very cool. So, what do you plan to do with that grad graduate degree? Plan to stay here in city and probably work for the city or some governmental um, agency or possibly non stay in the nonprofit sector. What's like the position you would get? Um. Really depends on. I guess what I decide to pursue after, like I'm right now in the advocacy space. So do you um, know what you want to pursue for the most part? I think I definitely want to say within, um, local politics and governance, like whether that be with the city, I don't know. I'm kind of any job specific though. That's what I'm trying, I'm trying to, yeah, no, I don't have like a clear, you know, like a planner job. Like I want to, like I'm comfortable where I'm at right now and I can transition from the role I'm in where I'm in the nonprofit at to like a more hands-on direct role, which is I think what I'm going to do, but I don't have like, a, well, I'm trying to see like what, a position is that you'd want and like mm. what that pays. Oh, okay. Um, like for an average planner, I would say like a, a, a good job out of, out of grad school, would probably range anywhere from like 60 to 80. Okay. That's, that's good. That's kind of what I'm shooting for. Today. Are you cash flowing school right now? My what? Cash flowing school. Cash what? Flowing. Cash flowing. School. Oh, as in like, um, debt, like my pain, how am I paying for it? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I took out student loans. Oh, okay. A lot of student loans. Oh, well, I assume well, you went to undergrad as well. Yeah. Did you student loans those? Yes. Okay. And I graduated during the pandemic. So that's another reason why I started grad school because I was in 
kind of like a, a limbo state and know what to do. Well, that's not a good reason to go to grad well, school. Well, I knew I, I was interested in the field I'm in, but I just, I needed more more education and more um, knowledge of, of, of planning. And I didn't get that in undergrad. So with this program, I definitely got what I wanted. But obviously that is... You look like that dude that's on TV in a bunch of different sitcoms. Do you not know who I'm talking TV. about? I don't watch TV that often. Well, neither do I, but I've just seen pictures of him. What show? I don't know. You look like Max Greenfield. I've never heard of this man. A picture of his is on screen right now, but you look like Max Greenfield. Doesn't he? You yeah, know? Ugly Betty. <laughs> yeah, you look like the guy from New Girl. So before we go into your money, I want to hear from your own perspective, as honest and transparent as you can, what does your financial situation look like from your perspective? Yeah, so my financial situation right now is definitely not great. I know I have a pretty bad spending habit, um, and I want to kind of rein that in, but also just start saving for an emergency fund, but also possibly for a car, if that's something that I could... Do you not have a car right now? I do, but it's paid off my mom it was a gift for my mom like like um a few years ago so okay. like i don't pay actively for it but it's well it's a good thing yeah sure. but i do just like an, uh, a newer car i guess but it's not what's not, the car it's a 2017 nissan Sentra. okay it's not a bad you know car or anything i just would prefer something that's maybe electric and maybe you're nice okay well don't have to rush into that. Yeah, I don't think sure. that's on the priority list for of sure. things in grad school. Let's take a look at your take a look at your stuff. Then we have a Chase checking account. So yeah, only a thousand three hundred eighty two went in, and more went out. A thousand four hundred went out, ending with two sixteen. Kind of, uh, you know, one big thing could hit that, and then overdraft or denied, depending on what the situation is. But yeah. You get paid in cash because you put in seven hundred bucks of cash. Oh, it was just a deposit, like a random, like a. Oh, well, like where'd you get seven hundred bucks from? It's kind of a long story, but um, it's it was just a cash deposit that I had from that was transferring from another bank account to this bank account. Do you have a sugar daddy? No. No, and the, I guess I'll just come up front and say right now, as far as like, because this has to do with my other bank account, my um, UFC account. I basically got scammed. Uh, last month in that sense of, in the sense of like, it was a check deposit and, and I think it was just, you know, my own kind of, um, no, the reason why uh, I asked if you had a sugar daddy is cause a daddy oh, that's cash a person. you 400 and that's a person who I sent it to. That was his username. I know that's one of those things that was just like, I was, a, it should have been a red flag right then and there. But I mean, at the point I was already too deep in that I couldn't like, you know, not do it because it was four hundred dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was like half of what I've been, I cash apped him, and that's kind of where I've been kind of what dealing with for? that. Like it was, it was just like a straight up scam. Like this guy was, I was trying to help him out as far as like he came up with this story. Nigerian prince? No, it was just like um, like a I. One of those things they were just like trying to help someone a stranger out kind of thing where it was like oh i need money like my my i need to pay my rent and my kids are like hungry he came with this story and i was like okay well where, where did he approach you how did you get in contact it was like a random person but it was just like no, i don't want to go too like, much I in the need- dis- i don't want to go too much in the details but basically it was just like a cash mobile deposit thing where he had a check and i knew i knew like you know, the situation was very sketchy going on but i was just well that's you know, fine you went into a guy scan i'm just very curious how he got in contact with you in the first place it was a friend of a friend oh, so okay. it wasn't really I didn't right. know the person. Yeah, you took out four hundred dollars, who or you took out three hundred dollars from ATM. Who knows where that went? You took out six hundred dollars from an ATM. Who knows where that went? Spicy boys going to Spicy Boys, Lucky Lab Coffee, Spotify subscription, uh, but actually not too much in this overall state. Really not too crazy, but that was the older one. It's not really an opportunity. No, it was the updated one. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, oh yeah, 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 that was the new one. Yeah. So, but there's. I mean, there was, you know, there was not really an opportunity for a lot of money to go because not a lot of money came in. Yeah. So I'm glad I wasn't spending like crazy. Then Acorns, you have an Acorns subscription. Yeah, I've, I have I haven't like an investment. There's like $100 in that account, so it's not really something I'm too um, using too often. Okay. I think I have like a $5 deduction every month or something like that, but it's just kind of a good set aside. Capital One, another checking account? Yeah. 
Okay. I don't have an updated one for that. Yeah, I, that one's like monthly, so I, I, wouldn't, I wasn't able to pull a new one just because okay. So for the month of February. Uh, dude, started with 100, ended with 100. That's, yeah. Sketch. That's usually like my primary checking account right now. And I know some people are really good out there with having low balances because they manually pay everything, but most of us were on automatic payments, so that's where it automatically sketches me. Mm-hmm. Uh, ooh. Okay. So from here, let's see what we got going on. We got Kirby Lane going out to eat there, the Grackle, El Dorado Cafe. See, so now when you add these together, it's a lot more. Lots of parking, the new coffee, Tiff Streets, Pot Belly, some Ramoon Coffee. So and now we're PayPaling out again. Now it's really starting to add up. PayPal, or I'm sorry, P. Terry's, Texas Low Income. That's my paycheck. Oh, okay, okay. Raising Canes, UT Food, UT Food, Top Notch, Coffee, dude. Okay, for someone who barely makes anything and you're living in one of the more expensive places in the United States, and you're taking out student loans to go to school, you're basically, you know, in a way, you're taking out student loans to pay for all this. Not necessarily, just because my student loans paid directly to my tuition, so... But do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But if I'm, you weren't spending all your money on this bullshit, you could put it towards school. But since you did not do that, you had to take out student loans. Well, it's mostly food, so I have to eat. I just need a... Yeah, you have to eat. You can get groceries. I could, yeah. Okay. That just pained my brain. Chipotle, Summer Moon Coffee, P. Terry's, First Watch, Lucky Lab. No, you don't have to go to Lucky Lab. No, you don't have to get burgers and fries from P. Terry's. No, you don't have to go do this. That is not the kind of calories you need to have, Summer Moon Coffee. And Zilker Brewing. Yeah, is that necessary for your caloric Mm -hmm. intake to survive on a monthly basis? Whataburger, Medici, Spicy Boys. Love Spicy Boys. I don't think that's necessary for you to survive. Pop Belly, Thundercloud Subs. Thir- or ne- oh, good, because Thundercloud subs absolutely suck. They're horrendous. I don't know why people like them, but it wasn't that. It's actually Thunderboard Coffee. Sour Duck. Level credit. What Level is that? Credit? Level credit? Oh, that's like my like reporting a credit agencies. Like a six six ninety five is what the charge is. Like it re- uh, report like my um, utilities and oh, okay. stuff too. Probably rather you use something like Fizz, but that's... Fine. P. Terry's food service. So this is almost like every day going out to eat. So I'll Pretty first checking account, I was like, now I'm like death. And we're borrowing because we can't afford to go to school somehow. I wonder why. Okay. And then we have university credit U savings. Okay. So we put in 800 bucks. Well, then we took out 700. Then we took out 800. Okay. Then we put in 500. Then put in 800. I'm very confused. It has to do with the check, the situation. I Any balance, $109. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have savings. No. Okay. There's nothing left other than credit cards. There's no more checking accounts, right? Um, Not that I see. Or savings. I believe there is one more checking account. Do you know what it's called? Uh, First National Bank. But that one's not really used too often, but... I don't have First National. Not but it's not used much? No, not really. Okay. Yeah, I don't have it. Not in the first batch I sent you? If it's called First National, I don't have it. First convenience? Nope. All right. Well, yeah, there's not... There's usually like $100 in there or so, so it's not really much. All right. Discover card. Let's see what's going on here. Well, I don't see the balance or anything. All I see is this is just your purchases. Yeah, so that's like the first. I think that's the first bill, but the updated version I seen you has the char- charges on it. Because that, that for that yeah, month, but no balance. What? For it that, just has the charges, but no balance. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So this is the updated version. So, um, yeah, the balance. That's, that's the way it came out. What's I, the balance? What's owed? I'm assuming there's debt from yeah. these conversations Yeah, well, I mean, so I just paid it off. I, would, I could tell you right now, though, but... You just paid it off? Not entirely, but most of it, yeah. Yeah, because uh, the first Discover bill I sent you didn't... It was just me making one debt payment, and then I racked up that those charges, which I just paid off, and so... What's the balance on your Discover card? Yeah, right now, my balance is $130. Oh, okay. Have you been paying any interest? Yes, but it's like a couple dollars. Still not good. 
And then if we weren't going out to eat enough, we have Chick-fil-A, Spicy Boys, Banu Coffee, and Lucky Lab Coffee, Banu Coffee, Chick-fil-A. I run a coffee. You're relentless. Dude, I, I, make, I make better espresso out there than all of I them. need to invest in a coffee machine. I, I definitely. You can get a great Brewville, thank you, Mom, cof, uh, espresso machine that is perfect for starting espresso, 500 bucks. Not that you can afford that right now, but with all this coffee adding up, I bet it gets the $500 real quick. And then you just have to get beans. Chase. Oh, no, that's the check. Capital One, Quicksilver, balance 100 bucks. Okay. Yeah, you paid this one off. Good. Good. So there's not outstanding debt on there. Again, were we going out to eat enough? I don't know, but we're definitely adding Domino's, El Dorado Cafe, Bird Bird Biscuit. I've, I've wanted to go there. The so new good. coffee, Bird Bird Biscuit, Medici, Top Notch, Bird Bird Biscuit, and Panera Bread. Bird Biscuit's really good. You should try it out. I want to, but I'll be doing it without any bad debt or without trying to you know, borrow money to go to school. Blue cash every day from American Express, New Balance, 126. You paid this off as well, uh, so it's a new balance. So I'm assuming you're paying it off. Yeah. Buddy, what are we doing? Whataburger, Medi- Medici, Uber Eats, a food service, tacos, tacos, Summer Moon, Klarna. Oh, yeah, it's like a, a fin- I finance. I know what it is. What's financed? Uh, it was my cousin's wedding gift. It's already, I already paid it off. It was just like 50 bucks. You can't afford to get it. If it's 50 bucks and you can't afford to yeah. get it, then you don't get it. I had to get him a gift. If you can't afford it, you don't do it. Lucky Lab car f- coffee. And you're also paying for it on a credit card, by the way. You're paying your debt with a debt. Banu coffee, Bird Bird biscuit, and some lounge, 30 bucks. Dude, you're obsessed with spending money. You go yeah. out to eat twice a day, plus coffee at this point. That's pretty much right, yeah. I mean, I, I, I right now I don't have a lot of time to cook, which is one reason why I don't. Oh, f*** off. But Stop. Sh- I mean, I definitely up. know that my spending food habits is something I really wanted to address. Don't there is time to meal prep once a week. There is time to push brew on a seventy dollar um a uh, Keurig machine. Fuck you. You have time. Don't bull me. Uh-huh. If you bull me here at the table, we're not going to make any progress. Don't bull me. So I've looked at Discover, Capital One, and Amex. So let's go back to your previous email. Dude, you have so many different things. It's absolutely wild. Chase Freedom. Let's see. Uh, you didn't fully pay this one off. But, yeah, and you lost 277 in interest. Oh. You're making just small, it's kind of small purchases, but across a bunch of cards. Whataburger, Banu Coffee, Banu Coffee, Medici, Medici. Those are coffee, by the way. And L... Taqueria dough. Oh, it's tacos. Here's another. So Southwest. Let's see what you did here. You did pay that. So I'm glad you're paying it off. I'm not going to beat you up for that, but I'm going to beat you up with just the crate. AustinPolitics.net. What even is that? Uh, Mine's like neighborhood. A, Twenty dollars. That's my neighborhood association, and then Fair the enough. insider newsletter for city politics. <sighs> did we look at Capital One? Is that one that venture we looked at? Venture one. I have Venture and then Quicksilver. Okay. We looked at Quicksilver. Capital One, Amex, Discover. I have two. Okay. So Capital One Venture. Again, 100, you know, within the $150, $200 range of purchases, you didn't fully pay this one off. So interest charge, 315 With these small little interests, I wouldn't be surprised if we were losing like 50 bucks a month on interest, bringing in only $2,000 on a monthly basis post taxes. Guess what? We're going to Merdichi. We're going to Bird Bird Biscuit. Haven't had enough of those birds and their biscuits. And Cabo Bob's and Lucky Lab Coffee and P. Terry's and Summer Moon. This is like a... Austin wish list of just spending endless money on here. <laughs> Apple credit card. Two seventy seven. That was like a refund for a hotel that for my cousin's wedding that was refunded and put to another card. So it was it was put on my card, but we put it on a different card, so it was refunded. Okay, I I, I do see that. Automotive something oil change. My car um, brake replacement. Then you have a few subscriptions, it looks like. Yeah. What are your subscriptions? Three subscriptions. Um, one of them is like an Apple Watch Care and then um, Paramount. And then I forget what the other one is. 
Mm. How much? I'm not sure. Mine is always like Hinge Premium Plus. Because yeah. I'm desperately single. <laughs> okay. And Lowe's credit card? Do you have a Lowe's credit card? Yeah. So my, uh, I bought a condom, a condo last year and it had a refrigerator. Mm. So I financed a refrigerator on that Lowe's card. You're not fully paying this off. You're only putting a hundred bucks to it. It's almost paid off. No point. It's It's almost paid off, but why not just pay it off? Didn't have the money. You know why you didn't have the money, Bird Bird Biscuit? Because I'm poor. No! What are you talking about? What do you mean? That's going to piss me off because you're poor. You've spent more than triple what the balance is on here on bullshit. On food. On bullshit. That's bullshit. I mean, to some degree. What do you mean? Well, I need food to live. How do you just say that again, even though we've clearly talked about last time how you can meal prep for a fourth of the cost on a weekly basis, maybe a fifth or a sixth of the cost on a weekly basis? What is this? You need food. You did not need Bird Bird Biscuit for your caloric intake on a daily basis to survive. That's her. Thank you. So, no, you don't have this because you're poor. You have this because you're prioritizing your spending on what you're throwing down into your gut three times a day. Coffee in the morning, then you're getting lunch, and then you're getting dinner. (sighs) Usually I'm angry at the debt, but I'm angry at you for saying that. What is this? What is this? Chase Freedom, $2,515? Yeah, is that correct? Uh, that's the updated version. I mean, I paid it off. Like I oh, it's paid off. Like oh, because yeah. we looked at the chase didn't we? Yeah. Oh god, how's about to just die? Uh, then we have lots of student loans. Are those all the student loans? Yeah, to my knowledge. Three thousand five hundred plus two thousand two hundred fifty three plus four thousand five hundred plus two thousand two hundred plus five thousand five hundred plus. 2,137 plus 5,500 plus 2,032 plus 14,000 plus 12,000. Oh, buddy. That's a lot of student debt you got there. 53,622. I can't see what the interest rates are. Oh, f- of course, at the top of the page it says what the current balance yeah, is. Yeah, I was going to say he has it on there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> Uh, well, because they're deferred right now, I can't see what the interest rates are. I'm very Yeah, curious. they kind of vary. I think some of them, like the unsubsidized ones are like maybe two or three percent they're not anything ridiculous but they're not uh, they're not being paid what's well, like the highest i really don't know mm. they're all federal yeah. that's a lot though they're not going to be forgiven probably not and you also have a mortgage which is very curious i do it's a very cheap mortgage where is this condo yeah, so I actually got this condo last summer um, through the city smart housing program. I think I saw one of your videos, someone on here said that they were in a smart housing rental, but this is a ownership unit. So um, yeah, so basically it's just subsidized housing and it's income that you restricted. Can purchase? Yeah, it's income restricted. So you can't make more less more than a certain per, like threshold. Where in town is it? Ish. Allendale. Kind of. Burn it, twenty-two, twenty-two. Okay. That's cheap. I mean, it's a studio. It's a four hundred square foot studio. So it's like anything like super. Purchase. Mm, you think a studio is a good purchase out I there? Lived, yeah, I mean, I lived in a studio For literally investment? across the street, and it was fine. And I, I actually. No, I, I know. I just wonder if you're going to get like a return on this investment. Oh, I'm not looking for a return. All the way out there. No, I'm not really looking for a return. Like, and I can't really make a return off of like a income restricted unit just because it's of its nature. Like, it's um, it's only it's. Um, increases every, like two point five percent every year, so it's like not appreciating. What does? Huh? It's, it appreciates two point five percent each year instead of like the market. What do you mean, guaranteed? How does that work? Because the city has certain guidelines. Regulate. And they say it's worth two point five percent more than it was last year. No, it's year? just like it can't ex- it can't appreciate more than two point five percent. So I mean, like the for instance, like this unit was first purchased by I'm the second owner. It was purchased for ninety nine thousand dollars and was resold to me for one hundred and six thousand dollars. So in those years, it's it, I, I would not have put my money in there. Why did you do this? Because I was paying twelve hundred dollars for rent in this subsidized unit, and I found this 
this place. This is cheaper, but now you have money locked in there at something that cannot appreciate with where I am bullish on Austin in the long term future, not within the next year or two, but you're locking your money into something that is not going, not giving you a good return, and not even keeping up with inflation barely um, in normal times. You know, around like that three percent. Yeah, I mean, the main so thing for me was just choice. trying to secure housing, but also affordable housing. No, I get that. I do. I just wonder if, like, the temporary thing. Also, you could have easily paid your rent if you weren't doing all that crap with coffee. And, again, it comes down to your, just where you're allocating your money. Your budget has to be, like, 75% Medici coffee, bird, bird biscuit. Yeah. Yeah. $733 a month, minimum monthly payment. That's fantastic. I mean, that's, well, I mean, that's fantastic for the area. I mean, it's unheard of. It is, unfortunately, 36% of your income, so it's still way too high, and you're locked in it. But we need to get your income up. You're about to graduate. That'll help with things. What is the interest rate on this thing, though? Like 3.85. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 3.875. Okay, good. I'm happy you're able to lock in there. Dang. I'm very iffy about this. How much did you put down? Not a lot. I mean, I definitely a couple thousand dollars. I'm trying to think back to the exact numbers, but um, interesting. Maybe like five thousand. It wasn't really like I said a lot. It was just enough to qualify, and then really didn't know this was a thing. This is really curious in yeah. Austin specifically. I mean, my realtor said that she had never seen a unit that low, and as someone that has worked in real estate and helped people find housing, I never found a price that. So it was kind of why I jumped on it, and was just like, yeah. Why not? But I do see your point as far as like you know investment. I, I never came in with came in with that mindset as far as you know where am I putting my money at. But you only have a few thousand dollars locked in anyway, so it's yeah. not. It's not. It's like, but one so. thing I will say about my mortgage is that it is my principal is like less than half of my my interest. So I'm definitely wanting once I get more. Well, income, it's because you're wanna, at the beginning of it. Yeah, I want to you know put more towards that. Maybe I mean it's under four percent. I don't know if it's worth it, mathematically speaking. Because 10% of the S&P 500, which is the average, will beat 4% every single time. That, that's the math behind that. That's only if the money goes towards the S&P 500 and not the extra money that you'd put towards the mortgage is going to coffee and bird, bird, biscuit. Is that it? Mm, I believe so. I believe so as well. Student loans are my main concern, but I don't know what the interest rates are. Yeah, I'm not sure why they don't show it on the screenshot I sent you, but... So it's actually not my main concern. Right now, your minimum monthly payments with the mortgage and what the student loans will be coming soon. Uh, and then, obviously, with what you're spending, it makes no sense for your income. So what we need to do is immediately... Are you job shopping yet? No, because I'm kind of hoping to stay where I'm at as far as the nonprofit, but, like, not in the Better same job, role. Better job, though? Have, yeah. the, have you had conversations? Yeah. And yeah, they're they're definitely open that they want me to stay and, and transition to a different role. It's to just, about what kind of income? That's something that still you know. What do you I'm, think? I'm shooting for sixty, sixty-five. Okay, okay. If you do that, the thing is, from here, there's a lot of if ands and buts, which is actually curious because we haven't had this in an episode right now. What is very clear. I mean, you've already borrowed everything and put it towards the student loans, so there's there's no more to borrow, and there's no more you can. Okay, it's already done. It's already done. I also did just get my income tax return a few days ago and paid off a lot of my credit card debt. But Wait, I, you had credit card debt. What? You had credit card debt debt that you were not paying off fully. Oh no no. Oh well, I carry a balance like a small balance every month. So I was just. Why do you carry a small balance on every month? Sometimes I don't either have the full amount of money to pay everything off. Yeah, but it's okay. Something. You're not a credit card person. Chop them up. You're not a credit card person. It's fine. It's okay. There's nothing prideful about being a credit card person. You just can't use them. Totally chill. Do everything. Cash. Or, since you live in the modern age, debit card. Tracking it via budgeting an app. I'd use the, the card that I recommend a lot of people here. I'd use the Fizz card. Helps you budget. And it also helps build credit score. So you're taking advantage of the things like... You're getting with the credit card, but without the negative things that you are dealing with, like losing interest. Don't use credit cards anymore. Pay them off. Stop. Budget. Budget. When do you graduate? May. And then right after that, you should get that new job? Within the month. 
Good. I mean, seven. So let's just say sixty thousand dollars, okay? Okay. Because what we need right now, well, first of all, right now, what you should do because you have no savings and that's incredibly risky, especially someone with a mortgage, even though it is a cheap mortgage. And student loans are coming up. You need to, since your mortgage is so cheap, probably only do like twelve to fifteen thousand dollar emergency fund. But you need it's so risky that you do not have that. That you need to save up for that immediately. You need to cut back everything that is not gas and a few hundred bucks for groceries, and then you know all the you know any kind of insurances that you're forced to have, and then your mortgage payment. Other than that. No more, and I, I have absolutely no hope, no offense, but just from the conversation, you're saying, well, I have to eat to survive. I have absolutely no confidence that you'll cut back on that, which means I think for the next two months, I would try, I would try to build that up as quick as you can. You're not going to be able to with the $2,000. Um, like, not too much. You probably only have a few hundred dollars left over. You'd probably save up about 1000 over the next month. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. So, realistically, you'll have no savings in two months when you start your job. When you have the $60,000, though, what do we do? It's as easy. You're, you're, probably, you're probably, like, after taxes. Usually, I'm pretty good at guessing that. About, like, 4000 a little under that on a monthly basis you'll have. Which is great. So, it's like double. Yep. Woo! So, that's sweet. You are allowed to allocate $2,000 of that to needs. You shouldn't have to because your rent or your mortgage is 25%. I would minimize everything else. Try to have your needs be about 35% of your income. At that point, because you don't have an emergency fund, everything else needs to go to save up $15,000 for a six-month emergency fund. Then, boom, you have it. After you have that, then what needs to be assessed is what are the interest rates on some of these student loans? If there are ones that are over 4%, you kill them immediately. You don't have fun. That costs money. You're not doing Medici or Bird Bird Biscuit. You're paying them off. But anything below that, what I will allow is 50% on needs, technically, because... Well, the thing is, I'm like, yeah, but should he be spending money on fun? Should he have a fun category when he has this much in debt home and student loans being 150,000 like should he have fun yeah i think so for the home for the student loans maybe maybe not so i would probably try to minimize your needs category to 35 40% of your income then then i would probably do about 20% on wants if you really really want to i'd try to minimize that as much as you can this is me being generous. And then 40% should go towards investing. 40, 20, and 30. So, I mean, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely want to get into investing. And I know that's something I can't really do right now because I don't have the money to begin with. But uh, debt is something I am, like, looking at as far as in the near future. I know I have to pay um, the student loans once I graduate. I think I have, like, a six-month grace period or whatever. But I'm... Um, you know, at the end of the year, at the late, at the earliest, um, I'm gonna have to start paying those back. And I ideally would like to have like a fund kind of already established where I can, you know, use to supplement those payments instead of just like coming directly out of my paycheck every month. But what do you mean? Like kind of like start in that grace period, kind of start working on building up some kind of like a little bit of a like a like a fund to to kind of help ease the burden of my my loan payments when the time comes at the end of the year. So like a stockpile of money on the other side that it gets withdrawn from? Potentially. Yeah. Just cause I'm thinking of like, depending on what my expenses are at the at that time, like, I don't know if I, if I budget correctly, I should have, you know, it's money to pay for it. But just in case I don't have money, I can have that to kind of use as a buffer until I can kind of start re allocating hmm. my. Okay. Either way, your life comes down to a couple of things from here. Does he have high interest on some of the student loans? Number one, once I free that out, we attack it depending on that. Two, can he budget? So far, you have shown no potential budgeting. The fact that you've said twice now that I have to eat as a reason to go out three times a day for coffee and then two restaurants, I unfortunately have no faith in that 
but I, I have hope. I want to have hope. Please. You're at a point where you're halfway through the best decade of your life to invest if we can just get the emergency fund, if you can budget and you can start investing and pay off any high interest loans, that'll be good. And win this car, I wouldn't go for a new fancy car, not even close to now. With the kind of car that you're looking to get with $60,000, it's not going to be in your income bracket. I'm sorry, it's just not. Unless you save up just a bunch of money on the side, but that money should probably be going towards investing or paying off debt instead. Yeah. If Tesla keeps cutting their prices, maybe. But... As of now, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but no. Once you get to 80 to 100, then okay, we can talk about that. But starting at 60, don't even put the idea of a new car in your head. You're not in a place to. I'd rather you get rid of the student loans before then. I'd rather you invest before then. I'd, you need an emergency fund before then, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm nervous, man. I'm legitimately nervous. I feel like a lot of the people that I talk to who are in their early 30s, they are where you are now, and they didn't change anything. I don't want you to be them. I don't want you to be on this show in six years when you're 31, and you're like the person that I just interviewed before this who was 31. Non-good financial shape, I'm assuming. It's never budgeted. Just as an endless amount of high-interest debt, and that's where you'll be because you're spending more than you make right now. Yeah, I am. And that's something that I, like I said, I have a spending habit and I actually there's one credit card that I just opened up recently that we didn't discuss that I put. Stop, you're not a credit card person. Maybe. Use Fizz debit card or use your own debit card or use the envelope system. I'm Budget. It it, it's relatively new and it's a resource that I partner with because it can help a lot of people, especially in your situation. But in the end, it's about you. I want to know, be as realistic and honest about your own mind as possible Tell me what's going to happen from leaving here. So leaving in here, I definitely want to cut back on my spending. I think I, I, I've been more aware of, of it now, especially coming to here and, 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 you know, do I need to buy this right now kind of mindset? And, you know, I've, I, I can say I've already, I've have it, I've only spent, once money today and so I'm, I'm gonna not i'm gonna make sure not to spend any more money today i'm gonna go home and eat at home so um i think it's gonna take some time i'm not gonna like cut back i would say immediately even though i know Why? i should I, it's i guess hard it's a habit it's a hard habit for me to kick it's and, hard um but why not like act like you're an adult should I just like cut my credit cards that way? And I don't yes. have. You're not any. a credit card person. I mean, that's fair because I mean, that's kind of one of the things I, I kind of use justify when I'm spending. It's just like, oh, I know I used this card last time. I'm going to use this other one. So it's not on the same one. But, and because I have like six, it, it, it's just like I rotate. And I mean, a part of it is because I don't, I don't make enough money to, I guess, pay for the, for whatever I'm spending because I'm putting it on my credit card. So I think an, an, an issue that I'm kind of worried about is that when I do receive more income is I want to make sure I'm using it responsibly and not digging a deeper, deeper hole. And so um, right now that's kind of where I'm like hoping to kind of have some guidance as far as, you know, actionable items to, to start considering at least now when I'm, you know, in that space between, um, you know, lower income and relatively higher income. Best piece of guidance right now is learning what the priorities are, where the money should go, and then budget according to that. So use a budgeting app of any kind. I use Rocket Money. I used to use Mint. They're both great. You can use Dave Ramsey's. You can use anyone. You need a budget. There's a lot of budgeting apps. Maybe I should make my own. I don't know. But you just need to learn how to budget. I mean, I have Mint. I just, and I do have like, you know, some budgets. I just don't follow them. Like yeah, exactly. A budget's only as good as you follow. Yeah. So actual setting good budgets is I think is where I can work on. I think I, I'll definitely, I mean, I've lived a frugal life. I would say up until now, Okay. up until now, like you know, when I was my undergrad and I was really rough in it and like making, you know, $20,000 and I definitely did not have the money to be spending like I am now. But I think over the pandemic, that's kind of where you a lot don't of have the money that you're spending now. Well, I know, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, this the pandemic definitely is kind of added another layer of complexity to this, but I'm kind of hoping to just bounce back from it. Excuses, excuses. I I I need to eat. I need these calories specifically that cost $10 a meal three times a day, including coffee. 
He's essentially subsidizing his entire life with student loans, and that just kills me. I am not opposed to the most disadvantaged people necessarily taking out student loans when there are no other choice, but he is abusing that system. Well, not necessarily abusing it. That would be, nah, whatever. Either way, he's just digging himself in a hole, and it's bad. And Hammer Financial Score, 2 out of 10. Make sure to check out all the resources in the description below and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.